a dog attack at home, there's expert advice that no owner can afford to miss right after the break. That's a good dog. Yes. Watch out for To the show. Now, a few days ago, we heard that terrible news out of country Victoria. A 14-month-old girl was mauled to death by the family dog. The toddler was attacked by a German wirehead pointer at home. Her mum pulled the dog away and was injured, but tragically, the little girl didn't survive. Now, unfortunately, attacks like this are not uncommon. And dog behaviour expert Brad Griggs joins us now with some great advice on how to minimise the risk for both yourself and your children. Welcome to the show. Morning, Brady. Uh, and you've got okay. Bruno here as well, a, a rescue do. staffy mixed dog. I certainly do. Brad, can I just start by apologising? I didn't think my feet would be visible in the program. The best. <laughs> and I have worn slippers. So please, and I hope Bruno's, he's not a chewer, He's is all he? good. He's Same very, texture. Yes, he's a very good You're dog. You're amongst he's friends, beautiful. Michelle. He's yes. beautiful. He's um, beautiful. Now, what would... What would make the family dog turn like this? And is sure. this sort of common for it to happen? I, I would challenge the notion of turn. Oftentimes, if we timeline these kind of events, I do court cases relating to this kind of thing, if we timeline it, there are indicators that something is going to occur. It almost never just happens out of the blue. Where we're dealing with something out of the blue, then we're probably dealing with a neurological or medical reason right. that underpins it. Unfortunately, uh, completely understandably, the dog was destroyed quickly, but in these situations, we never get to really examine what was going on so that we can learn the lesson from it. And that's one of the downsides of euthanising that dog so quickly. And when you say there's usually indicators, like what sort of things there? So uh, best information that we have in the world relating to fatalities is that uh, there are seven or eight co-occurring factors which happen time and time again. In over 80% of situations, four or more of those co-occurring factors happen at the same time. Okay. Like what? It, what are we talking about here? Husbandry factors. So training, socialisation, health, the appropriateness of the relationship. Is the dog restrained at the time? So there's a host of factors along those lines. Is Bruno doing okay Bruno there? Bruno knows exactly where his mum is. Oh, okay. Right. Uh -huh. He's looking at mummy off to the side. I thought it might be one of the indicators. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. He's the indicator that mum's going to get licked to death. But, yeah, so... Uh, when we timeline these things, that's typically what happens. And generally speaking, it all comes down to things that are or are not happening in that dog's life at that time. Mm -hmm. Can we so, talk about, I mean, how the dog's life changes when a child enters the family? Yeah. So it changes a lot, doesn't it? He, cool. he can oftentimes be treated like the baby of the family. Great example. In this incident, the dog's reported to be six years old. Yeah. The infant was 14 months old, so yeah. there's clearly going to be some change. Um, a lot of dogs can struggle with change in those circumstances. Yeah. Uh, it really comes down to things, that, again, that you're doing or not doing. So making sure that you've got the right steps in place so that that transition of the child into the home is seamless. Mm -hmm. um, certainly doing everything that you can to ensure that um, your dog has a good routine and that you guys as parents understand, hey, I have a good understanding of my dog, I have influence over my dog's behaviour at times of low arousal and at high arousal and I know how to reward what I like, which will certainly help move things through. And you, you have to be able to look at yourself and say, my dog, my dog has a great level of basic training and you know, that training stands up to the rigours of, of every day-to-day -day life. We're just bringing Bruno's yeah. mum in. Just to sit next to... Yeah, this is next Ruth, guys. Oh, Hello, oh, Ruth. I was just going to say that. It sounds oh, like he just wants his mum. A professional, really Ruth a is, yeah. uh, Ruth is actually uh, one of Australia's top pet photographers. So. Oh, wow. But when you're introducing a baby to the home, it's probably not a bad idea to get a professional trainer in and... Yeah. Yeah, look, sh shop around. It. It's an unregulated industry dog training, so it's definitely shop around okay. and make sure that you, you choose the right professional. But doing that kind of thing can really stop you missing the big ticket items yeah. and give you a feeling of safety, feeling safe. Hey, what about breeds? Because now Bruno is a staffy. And, mm. and he is also a rescue dog, isn't he? So, yeah. so for some people, th th those are warning signs in themselves. Yeah, so those people um, uh, can't see the forest for the trees. Yeah. So um, breed is a very poor predictor of behaviour. You, mm. you have golden retrievers that don't retrieve. You have yeah. most German shepherds would never be able to do don't police speak work. speak German. And, <laughs> <laughs> and they don't speak German, that's right. Yeah. And there is, there is no way that they could do the job that they were right. bred for. So genetics are a poor predictor of behaviour. Um, environment 
is a much better yeah. predictor of what's going to happen. Situation and status is a much better predictor of what's going to happen. How the dog is raised is a much better predictor of what's going to happen. And if we want to keep ourselves and our family safe, we certainly have to approach each dog as an individual, mm. never make any sort of rash judgment simply based on breed. Now, training's, you know, of course important for the dogs, but we have to teach people and kids. how to respond. Like in a case of attack, like what do you do? Or even just approaching dogs. So, so let me yeah. tell you what not to do if there's an attack, mm. right? So for starters, approaching dogs, why does everyone have to approach everyone else's dog? A yeah. lot of dogs yeah. don't want to be approached yep. and a lot of people approach in a way that simply isn't productive for either party. So why do you have to approach other people's dog? Ask the handler first whether it's cool. Mm -hmm. The next thing in terms of what happens during an attack, we've got a video on our Facebook page which gives you some information there that you can follow relating to that. It's a long discussion. But what I can tell you is straight away, if you're not immediate, able to immediately and effectively physically intervene in an attack, if you do that, you have to understand you may now become the subject of yeah. that attack. So you have to be prepared to be injured. We've got the points on the can, screen. Can so I, can, yeah, and, and one of those points is know how to play dead effectively. Absolutely. Really? So, yeah. And so you have to understand So that don't fight back. The system that we teach, we teach dog bite prevention right across Australia to a number of companies. We need to accommodate worst case scenarios. So in a worst case scenario, it could be that you have been incapacitated, you break your ankle, whatever, and you're down on the ground, and that's the best choice that you have is to play dead. Um, but thankfully, dogs are tremendous uh, in terms of the very, very seldom any attacks of this severity. Even this latest attack, uh, it could have been a tiny injury, like one tooth in a vital yeah. part, right, that could see an infant die. Yeah. It's just that easy. Like, we don't know what that dog actually did. Mm. So, uh, but in terms of what to do if you're going to be uh, on the ground, that's definitely on the video on the Facebook page that we can refer to. It involves covering your vital organs and making a few smarter choices, remaining quiet, controlling your breathing, um, those kind of things. All right. For more information on dog safety and for training services, you can head to canineservices.com.au. Brad, thank you so much. And Ruth and Bruno, thank, thank you, you as well. Thank you for giving us a lot of positive attention. No, no dramas. Now, uh, we'll check the latest news headlines.